For this review we're back into the big leagues of 1 to 18 scale. We start off with a big Scania 4x2 tractor and it's got a big load to carry. It has a law car transporter and as you can see it is humongously big and the box is huge. It's 43 inches or 1.1 meters. For these models you also need some strong muscles. The Scania weighs in at nearly 11 pounds. And for the metrically inclined, that's nearly 5 kilograms. The Cranes Etc. Weighbridge also gets a workout from the Law Transporter, and it's 16 pounds, or a press of the button tells us it's 7.25 kilos. Out of the box first comes the Scania, and with it a sheet tells you how to unpack, and it also describes the main features. With the top tray off, we can see the model is wrapped in soft paper. And if we follow the instructions, we can carefully lift the model out. Now this is an NZG model, so it's a big chunk of metal. And it certainly feels very solid. Next we have the challenge of unboxing the Law car transporter. Inside that very long box are a long pair of expanded polystyrene trays, and when we lift the lid again the parts are wrapped in soft paper. Here are the main parts, and there are foam rubber separators. And there are also bags containing a number of parts. The transporter comes with a comprehensive manual and it describes the parts that are in the box. And it also tells you how to configure the tractor unit in order to fit the transporter. And it goes on to describe the many aspects of functionality. And the transporter has a lot of flexibility. There are also some detailed parts to fit. And at the end there are different configurations of how cars can be loaded. To configure the Scania for the lower transporter we need to take off the fifth wheel support bracket. And that's just a matter of undoing two screws. We replace it with another bracket that's provided with the Scania. But we don't screw it in yet. Next we have a support bracket that needs to be fitted in front of the fifth wheel support. And that's in two parts and one gets pressed in from underneath. And you just have to fiddle a little bit to find the right support area. And whilst holding that bracket in place from underneath we can put the top part of the bracket on. That gets engaged and then it gets screwed down. The trailer comes in two parts. There's a short section which is fixed to the pulling tractor. And out of the box we need to raise up the top section. And to do that Allen keys are supplied to raise up the screw jacks. When that's done we can then lift in the section and place it on the tractor. It presses into two holes at the front and then drops down onto the support. This is all rigidly fixed and to do that we screw in two long screws. And they go right down into the tractor. With that this section is now fixed on. And one other job to do is to fit two landing leg extensions, one on either side. The legs come separately in bags and they insert in. And you lock them into position with two pins, one in each leg. To use the landing legs you can rotate them down and extend them. Or for transport you can tuck them in under the transporter. Next the larger part of the transporter is in fact a trailer. And a large pin is used to make the connection. Next we'll finish up raising up the front section of the top deck. And to keep things in place you can tighten it up by tightening some screws. Next we can lift up the top deck that's on the trailer part. And like all the moving parts here it's controlled by hydraulic rams and they're quite stiff. The rear supports can be locked in place at a certain angle by using the locking bars that are provided. And at the front there's a more variable system. And you can insert one pin on each side to hold the configuration that you want. Another thing to be added are the two loading ramps. 
and these fit nicely into slots that are formed for the purpose. Isn't it always nice when things know where they have to go? You can maximise the carrying capacity of the transporter by using the deck extensions, and that includes using wheel holders. These just rest in place and they can be a little bit easy to knock out of position. Next we all like a bit of safety, so there are some wire power pits that you can insert along the top deck. They are steel wires and the posts press into preformed holes. Finally another part you can fit are effectively wheel chocks. They can press into any position and there's a bag full supplied. Starting underneath the Scania, and as you would expect, this is a detailed model in 1 to 18 scale. The underside of the engine and gearbox can be seen, and there's a nicely modelled exhaust system. The big fuel tanks look good and they are also modelled in metal, and there are soft hoses which add detail. At the back the axle details are good, as are the treaded tyres. On the roof there are stub aerials and horns and a nice light bar, and it's always good when the roof light is see-through. The Scania grille is very impressive, and although it looks dark in this colour scheme, it does have nice mesh grilles. There are also tiny badges including the V8 badge, and in addition to the good quality lights there's an NZG number plate. A highlight of the decoration is the large Scania Vabis logo. Smaller details include nice steps and detailed wheels, and there's also a very good looking exhaust pipe. At the back of the cab there's plenty of detail within the casting, there's a metal grab rail and nice coiled lines. Here we're looking at the Scania in normal configuration, and it has nice stepping plates and a big fifth wheel. Also looking good on the model are the large wheel arches. At the rear there's high quality lights, some wheel chocks, and the Scania mud flaps are flexible. Detailing within the cab is also at a very high level. Moving on to the car transporter, and the first thing to say is that it has a very high metal content. All of the deck surfaces are in high quality mesh metalwork. And at the trailer pivot, the law name can be seen. There are lights down the side of the transporter, and the wheels also look very realistic. Above the axles, tanks are modelled, and at the rear, the light bar has large reflectors and another NZG number plate. <laughs> Back under the Scania and the rear wheels turn together on a fixed axle, and as you would expect the front wheels turn separately. One thing that is very good is the steering angle, which is tight. If you want you can configure the Scania as a regular tractor, and to do that there's a footplate which gets fitted at the front, and then you can clip the fifth wheel into place. It is a metal part so it does take some pressure to get it to clip. And it's also nice because it's got a working locking latch. Out on the road the model rolls very smoothly, and of course that's helped by its very heavy weight. And of course if you set the steering then you get a decent steering angle. There are opening cab doors on both sides, and to make yourself comfy you can raise and lower the armrests. Also, if you look hard enough, you can see that moving the wheels does in fact turn the steering wheel slightly. At the front, you can open the grille to see what's inside, and to tilt the cab, you need to disconnect the airlines from their holders, and then that lets you tilt the cab all the way forwards. And then you can see the very detailed engine. If you want, you can also raise the spoiler on the roof. The trailer has a full range of movement possible at the pivot point, and you just need to make sure you load the cars carefully. There is also springy suspension on the two axles, and when you come onto the decks there's a wide range of possibilities. The top deck slides backwards to allow loading, and you can also adjust the angle of the front part of the deck. 
so you can get a continuous running surface. As we've already seen, there are adjustable screw jacks at the front, and you can also lower the angle of the top deck structure. Moving on to the rear trailer section, and you can extend it at the front by opening up some wheel holders. And you can go further because the whole front section does slide forwards. Moving towards the back and the angle of various sections of the deck can be adjusted. And all these moving parts give you many ways to maximise the carrying capacity of the transporter. And if you're clever, you should be able to get eight cars on board. There's another adjustable ramp just forward of the axles. And the back end of the top deck is also adjustable for angle. So as you can see, there's no shortage of functional options on this transporter model. You can also raise up a car right at the back of the transporter. And you can do that when there's a wheel holder in place. And the reason you might want to support a car up like that is because the whole rear section also telescopes outwards. So a car will fit underneath. Of course you can also pose vehicles being loaded. And for that you need to pull out and attach the loading ramps. Now of course this model does look great, but it looks even better if you've got some cars to go on it. And NZG do make cars also. This is a massive model, so let's do a dim check. And without the rear extension, it's 41 inches or 104 centimeters. And the height to the top of a minivan on the top deck is nearly one foot or 30 centimeters. This is a very large and extraordinary model by NZG. It has a very high metal content and terrific functionality. And if you fill it up with some cars, it makes a fantastic display piece. So if you want some real heavy metal, there's no doubt that this model is excellent. Mm -hmm.